Hello and welcome viewers of AVG News. I welcome you to this program, Political Talk. And today we are joined on the studio by a man most of you already know, Dr. Zeb Maxwell Shumba. He's an academic based in the, in the United States. He's also a former advisor to former MDCT president, Morgan Swangirai. He's also a political uh, analyst and the president of the Zimfest political party in Zimbabwe. Doc, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Mr. Polisi. Thank you. Yes, uh, Doc, in your sabbatical from this channel, a lot has been going on, a lot has happened in Zimbabwe. We are focusing uh, on the 2023 election and already uh, there are signs of political violence. Can you tell us what you have heard on your side? Your party is already on the ground. A lot has been happening. What exactly is happening in Zimbabwe? Yeah, uh, I, I think we need to rehash the what Zimbabweans know or, or every day and already, that politics in Zimbabwe is very toxic, number one. Number two, ZANU-PF is a violent party. Uh, I think the violence is a product of who ZANU-PF is. ZANU-PF thinks Zimbabwe belongs to, to them because they liberated it. So they need to stay in power by hook or crook, whatever means. So violence is the tool they implement to achieve their, their goal. So what has been happening on the ground, as you ask me, uh, as a political party, in first, I think you know our strategy is not to do public events. We have our own strategy. And even within our strategy, we have been victims of violence. And on this call, I'm going to talk more, elaborate what exactly happened and where we feel we are let down by Zimbabwe. Uh, violence, unfortunately, policy, is generally accepted by Zimbabwe. Even there is violence in social interactions. There's violence in families. There's violence in politics. I see you on your wall. If you say something someone does not agree with, instead of rebutting you with their own facts, they immediately attack you. That attack is no different than to the attack we get from Zanu PF. So what we need, Zimbabwe needs cleansing. Really, I don't know how we can do it, but Zimbabweans need to understand that tolerance build nations. Intolerance breed violence and destroy nations. We are a destroyed country because we are intolerant. This violence thing I can tell you, if for example, ZANU-PF inflicts harm against Zimfest. The other parties will not come in. To them, it's normal. Oh, it's them. Why are they Zimfest, not our own party? Oh, sorry. Or oh, why didn't they join us? So it's okay when ZANU-PF uh, inflicts uh, damage to other parties. Instead of all Zimbabweans coalescing, and say, this is bad, condemn, condemn it uh, as Zimbabweans, we begin to pocket. Even the media, even the media itself, when our members were attacked, brutalized, brutally attacked, we went to the media and they did not publish the story. When people who were left at near death stage, yeah. we told the main news, uh, media channels, they didn't care the story because it's not their favorite party. You see, that's the problem. We are people who think violence is violence when it is 
uh, against the people we want, the people we support. And it's not violence if it's against someone whom we don't support. If people beat you up in police, yes. all those people on your social media will never say, oh, we're sorry. Because people tolerate violence. That's an unfortunate thing. And I want to say this, it starts with us Zimbabweans. It's not always, violence is not only Zanubia, it's Zimbabwean society. Uh, doc, you are talking to something that I can package as, to, as polarization in Zimbabwe yes. and yes. selfishness that if it doesn't affect me, therefore it doesn't exist. Why do we have this? Does this have anything to do with us as a people? Does it have anything to do with what we, uh, what experiences of the past we went through? I, I think, you, you know, we are social beings, right? Yes. And we, we grow because of the social environment we are in. ZANU-PF, number one, brought the element of greediness and selfishness. From the beginning, ZANU-PF made sure that if you don't support them, you don't benefit. So people began to understand, oh, if I want something I've, for myself, I have to support Zanupier. The neighbor will go hungry because they are not supporting Zanupier. And I will get something from them. That's when the selfishness begins. And that spread, became, people became selfish. If it doesn't affect me, then it doesn't exist. It's, it's the lacus of Zanupier. If we had a different party, I would tell you. I think on the other day, we talked about Joshua Nkomo, the yes. man I respect a lot, Father Zimbabwe. Uh, Joshua Nkomo uh, was a man, and up to now, his legacy is unity. He did not invest in dividing Zimbabweans as Develis and Shona. Zanu Zapu, sorry, Zapu is the mother of the liberation. Zanu came out of Zapu. The majority of the Zapu leaders, if you know, they were Shona. Yes. Very few in Zapu went to Berlin. It was the Shona us, I'm Shona. It was us who decided that Nkomo cannot be the president when we're in the majority. And then we moved out and formed Zanu. Yes. As a tribal party. That's where the division begins. Because now we are seeing each other as the villain. What? And so oh, sure. yeah. And and you go into a liberation struggle with these seeds already sown that we are divided and shown and developed. And then you win. And when we won, the division, the cracks even were wider. And then came Gukura Hundi, which was punishing anyone who spoke with Devele. Because the people who were disagreeing with the Mugabe spoke with Devele. It didn't matter whether those people were guilty or innocent. And the majority, you know, Gukura Hundi affected probably a third of the nation, right? Yes. <clears throat> Where was the two thirds? That's where I'm saying. If it doesn't affect him, if it affect me, then it's okay. Gukura Hundi did not happen in the dark. Yes. Gukura Hundi did not happen in Japan. It happened in Zimbabwe. And the majority never said it's wrong. The stories were being carried out. That's Pregnant women were being massacred. Innocent people were being massacred and buried in shallow graves in mines and everything. This was being paid out. As a nation, we never said anything. How, what do we expect that if we failed at that time, we'll be able to do something today? Yeah. Um, the, following the violence that we saw in Madobo just recently, a few weeks ago, uh, some of the 
residents of Matopo were based in South Africa, especially the youth, came up with what they call Operation Kuzum Zali, which means restrain your parent. Where after you hear that, if, if I hear that my parent is terrorizing people back home, I have to call them, tell them to stop whatever they are doing, but not only stop there, also name and shame them. Do you think this is going to work or is going to further inflame the situation? No, I, I think it, every effort in policy will help. Never discount someone's good good goodwill efforts. Those are goodwill efforts and they need to be encouraged. Yes. Because children have got influence. Children who are in South Africa, most of them largely are the breadwinners. They are the breadwinners. Yes. So the parents will listen. So it's, it's, you see, it's a complex situation, I can tell you, where ZANU-PF controls the state's resources. Yes. And then ZANU-PF created poverty as part of their strategy. And with the state resources, they use poverty as a weapon. Someone is told, we want you to go do this. And when you come back, we give you that. So in, a, in other words, they become employees of violence. They are doing it to gain something. You cannot tell that an employed youth who is seeing 100 US dollars in front when he comes back and said, don't go do it. So it's, it's a bigger thing where Zanipia invests in violence because it wants to stay in power. We, here, here is here's a story I want to share with you, which was never shared. Uh, we had an event scheduled for headlands. Yes. Uh, in September. And on the day, We, we we got intelligence that I think there were some suspicious activities. So our team, our leadership team, kind of delayed arrived. Sorry, delayed arriving. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, delayed arriving purposely. Is they they try to what to understand the situation. The, the MP for Headlands, Chingosho, organized his people, gave them his car and the other Zambia's car from the province to go and kidnap our leaders and beat them up. And our leaders started telling them how far they were from the event. And with their timing, those ZANPF uh, goons, thugs, thought, oh, now at this point, the leaders are there. And they descended. Our leaders were not there. They, they beat up the people mercilessly. All the women asking to lie down, beaten, asking where did you hide them? Where did you hide them? Were people who received lifelong injuries. That's what so we said. We, we alerted all the newspapers, the people there to be transferred to Awara for treatment. We alerted the newspapers, nobody talked about, nobody cared about. Because we are not their favorite party. That's it. An MP, a member of parliament, the people who beat our members are known. They went to report to the police. The police came and the police said, go to the hospital, bring medical record records. They did everything. But the people, the perpetrators were not arrested. I followed up myself. Number one with the MP. 
MP said he was away, but he had left his car in the hands of his what his team. So he was not aware, but he had he was told some 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 youth he had gone to beat our, up our people. Uh, I talked to the, the police officer investigating, and he said, This is bigger than me. I said, give me the number of the member of charge. Member of charge said it's bigger than me. Today, the people who beat our people are roaming freely because the hands of the police are tied. That is the bigger picture I'm telling, telling you. We might do all these things, but if you do not respect the rule of law, if there is no rule of law, who, who enforces the rule of law? The police. Yes. So if the police's hands are tied, then who's going to enforce the rule of law? Those people who beat our people, I can give you their medical records today. Yeah. Um, I, 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 you, think... I can ask you to follow up with Chigosho, the MP for Headlands. Yes. He needs to answer for that. We still, we still need answers because now our members are afraid. People are afraid to attend meetings. Yeah. Uh, there, there's something, Doc, which is worrying also from the videos that we have seen and from what you are narrating here. These guys are going around in ZANU PF registered vehicles with registration numbers written ZANU PF, what, what district. And then they are committing these acts. Do you think they have developed into? something like a terrorist organization where you perpetrate this and then you claim that you, you even lay claim to it, that of course it, it is us who did this. What is the purpose of this? Uh, in 2015 or 16, I think I did an interview with an international newspaper, uh, which I wrote an article that is, uh, Zimbabwe is a North Korea light. When the state on the violence, the perpetrators of the violence have all the courage because they know they have the cushions. They know nothing is going to happen to them because they are part of the state. When you make in ordinary youth, part of the state machinery. And the other youth is the, the enemy of the state. You have a problem. We have a dictatorship masquerading as a democratic uh, regime. It's a dictatorship. It's a North Korea light. They do everything which is, you know, the instruments of violence are learned. These are not haphazard actions. These are not something that people just do and say, oh, then, oh, we ended up doing this. No, these are planned things. Yes. They know what they're doing. Yeah. And then uh, there is, you've spoken about political parties, especially those in the opposition, not uniting, especially when violence is not meted on their own. Obviously, what you are saying is that there is something that political parties can do in unison. What is it exactly that needs to be done to ensure that 2023 or the run up to 2023 doesn't result in a lot of bloodshed like what we saw uh, previously, like in 2008? I've given up on political parties. <laughs> I, think, I think a coalition of the people is the people who should say no. One thing that appears fear is not a political party. Yes. It fears the people. That's why Zambia invests all these things to ensure that the people are subdued, create, created poverty. Those with brains ran away. Most. Or those with brains who remained will be taken to jail. Or will be brutalized. And those with, you know, the little, little to offer intellectually. 
are the people who are raised and become the bigger people when they are intellectually challenged. And then when these people who know, well, they, their positions are dependent, dependent on, 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 on the ZANU PF, they do whatever it, it takes to appease ZANU PF. So for us, I will tell you, uh, I think you remember in 2017, I invested a lot to, to ensure that political parties uh, unite. We yes. had an event in Stellenbosch where we signed a mass opposition movement. And we actually signed, we had a signing ceremony, 18 political parties. And those parties, when they got back home, they, say, they started saying, ah, we cannot be bound by a signature on a paper. But you are... ZANU-PF is telling you we cannot be removed by a pen. Yes. And you fight against ZANU-PF this. And in your own, you say, oh, I cannot be bound by signature in the paper because they are birds of the same feather. Yes. Political parties are, are led by people who are just as bad as zanu -PF. Yes. Uh, it's quite interesting when you mention people talk because in Zimbabwe's politics, in Zimbabwe's politics, which is sort of cultist in nature, where what the leader says people follow, do you still think that we have what we can refer to as people among our political activists? Yes, yes. Because it removes the political activists, Zimbabwe is clean. Yes. The political, anyone who calls himself political activist is, one, is part of the problem. Yeah, uh, I'm asking this because I think you saw what happened in, in what, what's that place where they were burying more blessing Ali. Yeah. And there was violence first by ZANU-PF. And then we saw reversal action again from Triple C, whereby even a, a, a homestead belonging to the so-called or the, to the ZANU-PF district chairperson there was raised down because Triple C leaders had apparently said violence must be met with violence. And now in such a scenario, it therefore tells you that we don't have a people who think on their own, but will always follow what leaders say. Yes. So, so here's the thing. When, you know, I'm a chemist, right? Yes. I want to give a chemistry analogy. If we have salt, in dirty water and you want to take out the salt, you grow what's called crystals. You put a crystal of clean salt and, and heat it and let it cool. All the clean particles will grow on that, on that small crystal. And then when it, it is cooled, the slower you cool, the bigger the, the crystal. And then you'll be able to take out the crystal and remove the dirty water. In my analogy, yes. the crystal are the people who are among us Zimbabweans who are impartial. And the dirty water are all these uh, people masquerading as activists. They need to be left out. This process needs a different mindset, different approach to the people. So in the in Tungwiza, for example, see Tungwiza, Domitav town, one of the heavily uh, densely populated uh, suburbs in Harare. Triple C and the Zanu PF were fighting battles in Tungwiza. When you look at the population which was engaging in violence against the population of Tsumiza, it's less than 0.1% of the population. That 0.1% is what has been magnified is, oh, the Zimbabweans in Tsumiza are violent. People stayed in their homes and never paid attention to what was happening 
with the issue of blessing. Yes. Those people are the crystals I'm talking about. Those are the people, the particles which are clean, which need to come to the crystal. And that crystal is infest. Yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we, we had, we had the, the House of Commons, I think, just recently, yeah. Yeah. expressing worry over the violence in Zimbabwe. And they were even muting some uh, more measures against Zimbabwe. Do you think this is going to work in the people's favor? Do you think it's going to well, help uh, bring down the violence levels? Well, here, here's what I say. Uh, the definition of stupidity is doing the same things over and over, expecting a different result. Yes. The first sanctions in Zimbabwe were put in 2001. How many years ago from today? That's 21. 21 years. If, we, if they manage to remove Zanubia? Not at all. Zanubia's cause has been strengthened because now they play the victim card when they go to the people. These sanctions help Zanubia justify their incompetence. They are greed. They say, oh, we are failing because of the sanctions. I, I was in Zurich in May. And they addressed the corporate world. I told them because they were complaining that China is overtaking, is taking everything in, in Africa. And China is unscrupulous. China got no ethics. And I told them, I said, look here. You might complain, you might blame China but you need a mirror test. You need to look yourself in the mirror. You are to blame because the, the Chinese, when they go to Africa, and if there's an election, they identify the most corrupt they can support, knowing that when the corrupt win, they can come with their unethical staff. And they put money in the campaign of the most corrupt. And those who are not corrupt, when they come to you, you cooperation, they say, we need support. You say, no, we are not allowed to support political parties. So the most corrupt will win, they become the government, and China steps in. And that's how, well, how it is in Africa. Yes. And then when China steps in, and the most corrupt starts being corrupt, and being violent, and say, oh, we're going to do sanctions. When you do sanctions, the most corrupt just goes to China. They do business in China. And the sanctions are, few, are useless. Those sanctions in Zimbabwe are useless. Right. And that's exactly what happened in Zimbabwe. Okay. Yeah, we, we are left with five minutes now. There is something other than Zimbabweans on the ground uniting, which is a a big ask, as you already know, yes. there is uh, something that traditional leaders, where most of the violence happens, can do. What is, what is it that you think they can do, and do they have the capacity to do that just in five minutes? Yeah, you know, the unfortunate. There, there's one thing we need to know as Zimbabweans. I think it's your show one day I said, if we go back to our culture, where then we can begin to move forward, our identity. Zanipi of tentacles spread even into the traditional leaders. They've been Zanipified. In Zimbabwe, a chief, I'm going to say in Shona, the real chief, and on the chief, Ane Ndoro Chena. You understand? Yes. Zimbabwe, of these chiefs, maybe there's only one or two on Indoro channel. Most of the chiefs are Zanipiev installed. Yes. People who claim that we are from the family of chiefs. And Zanipiev identified the, the same way China does in Africa, that's what Zanipiev da, does in, in, in with chiefs. So you cannot depend on a traditional leader who has been installed by Zanipiev. 
You understand? Yes. But our approach is to identify the real chiefs because culturally, the real chiefs have got the power of the ancestors. No matter whether they've been installed or not installed by the family. The Shikiros will still identify them as the real chiefs. These are the people. So when we talk of traditional leaders, let's not talk about the traditional leaders who are official. Let's talk about traditional leaders who are influential in communities, who might not have official posts. Yes, it works. And we've tested it. It works with traditional leaders who are genuine, not those who are officially recognized by Zanubia. Stay away from those. Okay. They are part of the problem. Okay. Thank you very much, Doc. We we hope that you will not disappear again next time. Hoping that next week again you will be available for us to take this forward because we want to focus on 2023. We will try also to have leaders from other political parties to be part of this discussion. But for now, thank you very much. Can you please give our viewers your parting words in a minute? Sure, thank you so much. Uh, I just want to tell you that uh, patience is a virtue. And with ZimFest, we've been building for since 2015. People see us as small, but we are not, we are rich in terms of substance. And we've been prepared, we are preparing for a future Zimbabwe. When the time comes, you shall see that our mandate is to the people, not to ourselves. And in these few words, I want to ask you to look more closely to what Zimfest is. Because Zimfest is a political party which says, you cannot be brutalized in your country when you are the country. You cannot be poor in your country when you are the country. Our country is rich. It, it, it's worth more than 33 trillion of natural resources. And we are only 15 million. Everyone could have been a trillionaire. And we are bent to do that. Because we know the 22 years I've invested in here, I'm going to give them back to Zimbabweans with what I've learned. Okay. That's why I dedicate my time to come and talk to him, policy. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you very much, Doc. There you are, viewers. Thank you very much. We will invite Dr. Shumba to come and talk specifically about ZimFest so that he lays out uh, what the party is all about. He lays out the party's manifesto briefly. But for now, thank you very much for viewing. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it.